Hello. <clears throat> Basically, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make um, a cross-sectional area calculator for I-beams. So in previous videos, I showed you how to do it for rectangles, so that would be useful in uh, for the cross-sections of concrete beams and columns. Um, but now we need to know how to do it for I-beams. Um, so we're going to assume that these beams are equal from top to bottom. These are standard I-beams, not the ones that vary. We'll probably do the variation in the future. So just so you know, the dimension, the naming convention for the dimensions I'm using are as follows. B up here, well, you can see everything here. Um, obviously, this is the radius of the little curve. Yeah, so... I've got these rectangles in here to represent um, the areas for calculation, but generally that's what it looks like. You don't need the... just in case you're wondering what those lines are. So what we need to do, how we're going to break this down is we're going to calculate the rectangular area here. We're going to calculate the rectangular area here. Well, obviously they're the same. So once we have that area, we also have that area and we're just going to multiply it by two. And then we're going to calculate this rectangular area from this to this face. And obviously we have the thickness there. And uh, the we're going to get the total of this area, this area, and that area, and that area. There's a very easy way of doing it instead of having to calculate them individually. We're going to calculate, we're going to calculate the area of a square, calculate the area of a circle. That will get four areas. Sorry. Yeah, and we're going to minus them from each other. That will get us the area here, and an area here, and an area here, and an area here, which obviously represent the other areas. If you don't know what I just said, don't worry. All will be apparent very soon. So, this is going to be... I'm just going to clear the outputs there and explain to you. I'm just going to explain how everything works. I'm not necessarily going to... Uh, type it all in. Um, so I used random steel to get these dimensions. So just so you know, in this video, we're going to input the D, B, T, T, and R, and then we're going to use that to calculate, to create a calculator to get D, this small D, and also we're going to create a ratio for buckling um, code. So let me explain to you how that all works. You can download my engineering tools repository from GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And what I've done is I've added the iBeam calculator, um, if you're watching right now. And I've also added a circle calculator. Um, so this circle calculator basically takes in the radius a radius that you feed it into it and it will calculate the area or perimeter. Um, also, if you've been following, you may have noticed that I've changed these things, uh, the returns. So as you can see here, I have self.v equals, so representing volume in this case, equals x times y times z, and then I return self.v. However, I realized we don't really need to create a new variable. So up here, I've removed the self.a, as it was, and just put it straight into return. So if you don't understand what I mean, uh, all I did was remove this, cut, and then paste that into the return. And it's a lot cleaner, not wasting variables. Um, not not creating unnecessary variables, and I'm going to do that here also. So cut and move that in here, and I'm going to do that with everything. Uh, I just hope I've done it right. I mean, I've done it right, but if there's a mistake, it usually happens in Jupiter. So just how we're going to do this is let me open this software here. Um. These lines represent, sorry, first, as I said, we need to get the rectangular area of this. So that would be B times big, big B times big T. That's your area. So in my code, I have two 
and then I've loaded in my rectangle area calculator which is up here I could have just multiplied them multiplied self dot b by self dot big t but I want to show you how to use these tools um, because as we get more complex, it's much better to do it this way by using actual modules you've made. So we can do it with basics and then get more advanced in the future where we will be forced to use the more advanced features. So if you can do it with basics, you'll be able to do it with more advanced. Um, Self.b times self.t area, and I've multiplied it by two so that we have an area here and an area here. That's those two done. Yeah. So we have this and we have this. Now we need to calculate this area here. So to do that, we take big D, multiply two big T's, and then we get the area uh, between this edge and that edge. So How do we do that in code? What I've done is I've said rec d minus 2t. Here is my little equation. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, oh, I'm not even going to bother. It's You know what that means. You know what it is. Uh, you're engineers. So d minus 2t gets the length from here to here. Yeah. And we'll multiply it by small t, which is obviously this length. So we get that rectangular area. Now we need to find out these little areas here. I'm going to remove these lines to avoid confusion. And then change the scale here quickly. Um, so how do we do that? To get these individual ones, um, what we need to do is calculate the area of a, a square and minus the area from inside. That Therefore, we get this area, this area, this area, and this area. So, the equation for that is to finish off the square, obviously, we know half... The radius of this is 8, therefore the length from here to here is 8. So, if I move that in place, and then do this, and then move these, you get your individual little areas all together, calculated all together. So, how did I do that? I created the circle calculator uh, for radiuses and perimeters. And so what I've done is I've loaded in my rectangle calculator and said 2 times r and 2 times r. So it multiplies this one by this one. Yeah. And then I've minus the circle. So I've said circle underscore r, and then input the radius from here, and used c underscore area. In fact, I'm going to rename that to, I was naming it differently because I thought, I mean, I was having problems when I was making it. I thought it was something to do with the association. Um, yeah, there you go. So that calculates the area there. So... It's very basic maths, but it looks a lot worse than it is, as I always say on these videos. So, how do I now do that? I've created a new Jupyter notebook. So, this is my import uh, setup, and this is my import PDF setup. And then what I've done is, as you can see, the, sorry, not PDF, uh, Excel. I've created these title blocks, sorry, um, column names and then I've put in some values and you know what I'm just gonna add some random values in here well one two eight I'll just say let's just say those all differ by that you'll never get beams differing like this 
But for argument's sake, we'll do that. I'm going to save it and close it. You should close the P, uh, the Excel. I usually so I do sometimes get problems if I don't. So now I'll restart and run all cells. Yeah, there you go. Now it brings them all in. I'm going to restart and clear so that we go step by step. Anyway, remember it's shift and enter to launch each cell. So now I've got my data in here and I've renamed, I've given new variables to each of these rows so that they're easier to type in like this. So I can type it in like this instead of having to say i.d there and then i.b. That's all this, this step is. Shift enter. And then I say to create i area, um, I say eng dot i beam. So that calls that calls this uh, eng calls this code, and then dot i beam calls this class. And then I've told it that I want this to be d here for each row, and then b to be b, etc., etc. Um, by inputting those, so. Then I've said I want to say dot area. So to calculate the area of the I beam, I've created this as I just showed you how, how I created that, um, how it works. And shift and enter is giving me the cross sectional area of each one. Obviously, they only slightly differ. And then um, the ratio of local buckling for the web. That's another calculation I've put in there. Let me talk to you about that. So ratios for local buckling equals B over 2T. That's an engineering calculation. So what I did was I have said that self dot B or big B divided by 2 over, sorry, 2 times T, literally the same calculation you just saw. And I've returned it. In fact, I'm going to do what I did earlier and cut this out of here. Paste it right into the return. And remove this because we don't need too many variables just floating around. Press F5 to make it work. And I'm going to restart clear all outputs to make sure it's got the latest one, just to make sure everything's working. It would have worked before anyway, but anyway, so now new column called DBF will be named this. And remember, if you want to rename, if you want to give these co new columns variables, you can do it the same way we did here. And that is your local buckling. Now, the area is in millimeters squared and the buckling is in I don't know what the units are for that let me yeah it's not really got any units because it's unit I mean it's length divided by length so there are no units but it's 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 a it's just a ratio anyway so just so you know if you wanted to convert from millimeter squared to meter squared directly you put brackets around this and it's divided by 1000 times 1000 shift enter and there you go it gives you the cross sectional area in meters squared but i'm not going to do that because it's unnecessary i'll leave the brackets in case i want to do it later um and yeah that is how you do some very basic beam calculations for using python um okay i think in the next few in the next video we might be doing moments of inertia or something like that well i'll see the next level of the of calculations and we're going to be using the same excel spreadsheet um yeah i'm, I'm not really going to share the excel spreadsheet because you've seen how easy it is to make um you can great create your own quickly it's not difficult. Um, if you don't have Excel, there's many online spreadsheet softwares. You can even use Microsoft's own Excel online to create something very basic like this. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Ooh.